Hello and welcome to School of War and today we've got that awaited episode about the light artillery. Now since I completely suck at light artillery, I have brought help from the best light artillery player that I know of, Dextro, Dextrous. Uh, say hello Dextrous. Hello guys. Hello back and uh, today we're going to be discussing what light artillery does, what is its role in battle, its strengths and weaknesses and a few tips on how you can be a champion light artillery player. So let's begin. Dextrous, what can you tell us what the light artillery does on the battlefield? Uh, okay, first I would, uh, I would like to tell what is the biggest advantage of the light artillery. Uh, arti uh, I think it's, it's the range and the mobility. And uh, because of their huge range, uh, they can uh, eas uh, easily to make advantage on the first spots. Mm -hmm. And uh, the second biggest advantage, by my opinion, is that uh, they can provide the slow effect. So they can force the enemy uh, to, uh, to slow their uh, advancing uh, and uh, Making a huge pressure on the player, does he uh, to decide does does he is going to keep advancing or falling back? Hmm. Uh, what about their effect on the skirmishers? Because personally, here's what I noticed: light artillery it definitely controls the field, but when the enemy is too close, it damages the enemy skirmishers just enough to reduce their damage, and when the skirmisher numbers are just too few, they just don't do enough damage to be significant. Would you say that is also their role? Uh, I think it is. Uh, uh, when he, uh, when the skirmishers uh, come in, in the range of the light RT, uh, they're gonna receive huge amount of damage because uh, I think maybe uh, because of their uh, formation mm -hmm. uh, on the first, and because they are not moving, they are uh, when they are firing, they need to stop. Uh, light RT uh, have a biggest impact. Uh, on the targets who are uh, in the uh, stationary position, uh, mm -hmm. then on the targets who are, the, uh, the, for example, fast moving targets. They will not have that huge impact, for example, in the moving cavalry. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Like, even though cavalry is a big target, I got a lot less, uh, it, well, payback from shooting the cavalry, especially when they're moving or if they're about to move. I just noticed it's just not worth shooting them in general. Skirmishers, on the other hand, even though they can move fast, when they're firing, they just cannot pay attention to those fast-moving bolts. Even then, uh, the travel time is not that long, so as soon as they stop, if you fire it right then, they will not be able to dodge. Or have you seen anybody being able to dodge that? No, no. I mean, That's I tried. Right. I tried. Uh, trust me, I tried. And uh, you can dodge the next ones, but the first ones you always eat. On the close range, it, it's uh, almost impossible. Oh, yeah, yeah. In close range, the, it's, the, you don't even try. For example, on the highest range of the RT, I think it's possible. Mm -hmm. But you only need to focus on the dodging. You will yeah. not have the chance of firing. In that case. Yeah, that's true. That is true. As soon as uh, as a player, uh, a skirmisher player, start, and, uh, uh, start to fire, and the enemy, in that case, he is going to receive a huge amount of damage as well. Yeah, so as uh, in a way, the light artillery kind of becomes that disabler of the skirmisher and anti-camp. Like, if you pay attention to what Dextros is saying, uh, it, you will see that it is only good against stationary targets. As such, it's the perfect anti-camp unit. It doesn't do much damage, but it's got tremendous range. As such, it prevents camping. Now, can people camp around light artillery? I would say no. It used to be the case, but after they had nerfed its damage, uh, now it is only, uh, it's only, how should I say, tactically viable to have it as a mobile artillery. Similarly, how artillery was revolutionized during the Napoleonic Wars, where they became, instead of stationary, into a more mobile role. And this is the case in this regard, because as soon as they enter skirmisher range, they are dead. Isn't that correct? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, so the um, so that's the that's basically that covers the advantages of it. Do you think? Um, what would you say in general the advantages of the light artillery to the team? Uh, uh, when you actually have the team, 
you uh, with light therapy you have huge, huge advantage because uh, you can completely uh, if you have coordinated team uh, uh -huh. for example if you have light therapy and the slingers or or uh, uh, archers you can completely punish uh, retreating units from the enemy team mm -hmm. in that com uh, it only that's two combination but there is also all other variants uh, yeah. uh, you can uh, you can uh, slow, uh, for example, flanking. You can uh, slow their retreating. Uh, in the in the in the team uh, in the good team uh, composition, I think it's very viable. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think it there can be some very good strategies revolved around light artillery. The my biggest eye opener was when we were playing on a training, I believe, two weeks ago on Rubicon. You deployed. Uh, right, so the entire team was just holding us in melee. We had the skirmisher advantage, but your team had the lighter, so you were playing the light artillery. Yes, yes, I can remember. Yep, yes. yep, you remember the one that I'm talking about. And what happened was, the our plan was to take out the light artillery, but we can't because we're stuck in melee. We are matched one to one in melee units, even if we did have the advantage, because you, as Sula, you have the speed advantage and you can just redeploy. So as such, it's very difficult to break through that line, even in an open map such as uh, such as Rubicon. As such, I have realized it definitely has a very vital role in the team. And uh, if you just leave it alone, it will just kill off all of your skirmishers and you won't be able to do anything about it. Because at the end of the day, it's a skirmisher with a higher range than slingers. Uh actually the slingers are the biggest counter for the light turkey as well ironically yes it's because the slingers also have got a lot more damage a lot more uh, unarmored the base damage as such because they can uh, close that gap a lot faster however if you've got an organized team that can keep those slingers away well nothing can stop you uh, probably the slingers and the cav is the biggest threat but when you're playing in the team you will probably have some protection so you don't need to to, to worry about cav that much uh, in that case your biggest threat will be slingers yeah that is but, true that should, you... if, mm -hmm. if you're playing slingers if you know uh, approximately uh, what is their range uh, you can uh, constantly you can undeploy reposition yourself and find better position because you have a uh, high range than slingers you can always find the target to ship yeah. yeah absolutely you always you will always have the target to shoot and you can still take them out in such a damage that one an interesting thing that i've noticed about light artillery one advantage is that your damage does not go down as you're receiving damage unlike other skirmishers right or is yeah. there like a limit to it? What's the model limit for them to be able to fully fire? Is it like uh, uh, I think it I takes think, yeah, with three with three soldiers? I think you can uh, still keep firing. Yeah, so it's three models, and seeing as how you start with twenty, you need to be at a very low health to be to even to have your damage reduced. So that's uh, one pretty big advantage in that regard. But it's pretty easy to lose those. Like usually two three volleys can take you out. One volley from javelins can completely wipe you off yes yes or for example one focus fire and one standard volley from the slingers your yep. unit is dead yep exactly exactly so that's a very important combo to remember you know one thing i know it's going to be a little derailing but i feel like the javelins and the light rt uh works very well when the javelins are on an aggressive configuration with trilobates because the javelins then are able to keep the keep the enemy skirmishers away from the light artillery from its range. Is the, or did you uh, or do you agree with that? What do you think? Uh, light artillery work, work, uh, work very well with uh, all uh, all other skirmishers, uh, especially when the uh, huge damage output skirmisher, for this, for example, like javelins. But not yeah. only to keep away their uh, skirmishes, you can also, uh, in combination, for example, on the infantry, you can also have a huge uh, damage output in that combination. That is true. That is actually very true. 
Yeah, definitely. The one weakness I would say outside of, you know, being vulnerable to enemy slingers and uh, archers, uh, javelins and the cavalry, obviously. So it's a fairly balanced unit. It's a very balanced unit. Uh, the, I would say one other negative is that you are not able to, you do not have focus fire. So you're not able to assist in melee. I feel like that's the biggest problem. Uh, you can do, but for example, uh, because you're you're going to play uh, probably with Sula or or Caesar, you can actually help your team as well uh, with their uh, ulti, with prescription, or for example, or other buffing from Caesar. Yeah, that's what I was. That's, that's the, what that's I usually try to do. Yeah, that's one way you can help, but that is assuming all the enemy skirmishers are dead. Yeah. At which point it's time to kite. <laughs> that brings back to yet another advantage of the light artillery. You can kite till the end of the world. It does, yeah. It does take a lot of. It does take a lot of practice to. Um, it does take a lot of practice to get that right because I st I'm still having problems with the positioning of the light arty. By God, it's giving me so much headache. But does it get better in time? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, that's good to know. So, what would you, what tips would you give to new light artillery players? Like, what should they, what should they look out for? What should they focus on when they're, when they have decided, okay, my role in a team is going to be light artillery. I'm going to be area denial, and I'm going to be taking out enemy skirmishers before they become a big problem. Uh, they need to focus the biggest threat. Uh, for their team, that that would be, uh, for example, javelins or or the archers. Mm -hmm. They uh, they are designed to 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 deal huge amount of uh, armor piercing damage. But I think if they are uh, keep fo focusing uh, light targets, they are gonna be more viable for for the team. Yeah. For so example, focus on light targets. Yeah. Yes. Because they're they are going to kill much uh, way more models. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, uh, they they do not need to focus, for example, pike players. Yeah. If if, if if they have, for example, clear target, and uh, of the pike players, and uh, slightly behind of their range is uh, enemy range player, it's better to, for example, reposition themselves and try to uh, to shoot in their range. And avoid uh, because of that spread formation of the pikes, they probably need to avoid shooting pikes. Yeah, that is true. I did know. I did kind of notice that it's pretty easy to shoot the pikes. But the thing is, if you do shoot the enemy skirmishers, you reduce the damage that the enemy skirmisher is going to do, and you contribute to your team's victory a lot more than shooting the pikes. Yes, yes, of course, because probably when you uh, pikes. Uh, uh, not only pikes, uh, slow-moving units. Yeah, uh, they don't need to focus them because they can always kite. They they are not threat for the light arc. They are yeah. not big uh, big threat for the team because they you can always uh, full back. You can kite. You can uh, reposition yourself, and actually your team also can uh, uh, avoid the fight with the heavy infantry. Mm -hmm. So, by my opinion, is uh, better to focus. Uh, uh, Enemy, uh, enemy skirmishers, uh, javelins, uh, maybe slingers because they are counter uh, counter threat, uh, but they are not, you know, they are not uh, uh, huge damage uh, output dealers. Yeah, that's the that's the big dilemma with light artillery. If you focus on slingers, then you're taking out your counter, but slingers can't deal with anything but you. So you really need to make that calculation. But yeah, that yeah, is yeah. completely up to the situation, really. But focusing, for example, uh, javelins is way better because uh, yeah. using the number, uh, the model numbers on the javelins uh, will have a huge impact. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it has a huge impact. Like when my javelins are like under ten, I'm basically relegate myself to just buffer roll rather than trying to attack. Like if I'm low on models. Uh, you will see me dodging, trying to dodge everything instead of trying to do damage. So it's uh, that's that's another thing. Yeah, with the javelins, that's always the case. Your uh, your idea is to do as much damage as possible in the shortest amount of time. Uh, 
because well you're gonna get shot at and you're trying to do you're trying to take out the enemy skirmishers and such uh, it's it's really tough it's really situational and if your models are low you can't do anything and uh, the where it's also the light artist shine if you for example have a, a players who who is keeping the his units in the blob yeah Oh yeah, yeah. The light art is a huge punisher of the blob. That's the dream. That's the dream of any light art. <laughs> that's true, and it's so easy to keep your units in a blob as skirmishers because it makes it so much easier to dodge volleys. So that's a big trapping of it. That's why I always watch for the for the light artillery presence in the field. Uh, whether I'm gonna blob or not is completely de completely dependent on how much space I've got for maneuver. And two, does the enemy have light arty? So that's uh, that's an important factor. Uh, what about what about the, what about consumables? Yes, the big question: What consumables should people take? Uh, be, uh, if if you're playing with Sula, uh, by my opinion, and it's better to take uh, stakes than uh, I'm uh, but I'm, I'm using uh, I'm playing with Sula mostly and mm -hmm. I'm using on two unit stakes uh, and on commander units I'm using cultures but uh, what is better I think than all of these uh, consumables is uh, car partner because you you will receive a way more range with car partner yeah, so you're you're basically saying a stake slash uh, stake slash caltrop, uh, and the second consumable yes, being something, carpenter. Something, yeah, something for your protection. Yeah, and uh, uh, for that damage output and outplaying other players, it's carp. Uh, I think far away the best is carpet. Yeah, that is true. The using consumables, we'll have to talk about that in a future video, but. The consumables, the way you can play stakes can play a big role. For example, in our today's training, we're playing at Thermopylae. And just because you had stakes, you had put stakes on the hill, we had to walk around it, which bought the team enough time to shoot two more volleys. Uh, yes, that's also one of the uh, advantages. But I think that uh, style of gameplay is only viable with Sula. Yeah, because that is true. Of the past, past deployment. Yeah. In yeah. the other case, for example, if you play with Caesar, uh, if you have a, a range against yourself, uh, you don't, you will not have enough time. Uh, the enemy will have chance to catch you. Yeah, that that does make perfect sense. All right, I think we have covered everything. Uh, do you have anything more to add? Uh, nothing. Nothing special. Yeah, I, I think, think... Uh, nothing special, but I think that's the very, very good weapon for uh, in competitive sense and in the team play. Yeah, I absolutely agree. After seeing it in Rubicon and uh, numerous matches, if it is used right, if if the whole team is on board with the idea, then it can really shine. It just doesn't shine very well in our kind of training because it's a little bit random. You're trying to build a strategy out of what you got rather than a uh, team out of what you what your strategy is, if you know what I mean. So uh, it uh, in a very planned battle, that can make a huge impact. All right, well, that's all we had for tonight. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and we will see you next time.